In this video, we're going to introduce buffer solutions, which are an important and, and highly useful and really conceptually insightful application of acid-base equilibria and aqueous equilibria. And to introduce buffers and sort of get us thinking about where they come from and why they exist, I wanted to return to this graph of the concentrations of various ionization states of a polyprotic acid as a function of pH that we looked at in earlier discussions of polyprotic acids. And I want to focus in on these regions where, and there are two for the diprotic acid, carbonic acid, these regions where the concentrations of the acid and its conjugate base are relatively close to one another or exactly equal. And so, for example, for H2CO3 and HCO3 minus, there's this region roughly bounded about here where the concentrations of HCO3 and the conjugate base are roughly equal, and at that orange dot highlighted in the middle, they're exactly equal to each other. Something interesting about this particular region of the graph appears if we turn our heads sideways and consider how much pH changes as the concentrations of H2CO3 and HCO3 minus change a great deal. So pause the video, take a second, turn your head sideways, and think about what's happening here. Is the pH changing by a lot or not by much as these concentrations change in this region? The thing to notice here is that even though, for example, as we increase the pH, the H2CO3 concentration is plummeting, is decreasing actually at its most rapid rate over the entire graph in this region, and the concentration of HCO3 minus is very rapidly increasing in this region. Although those changes in concentration are rapid and large, the pH actually isn't changing by much. If we pay attention to the span for the, the horizontal span, for example, this region, it's not very large. This is the hallmark of a buffer solution, which is defined as a weak acid and its conjugate base in approximately equal amounts, or a weak base and its conjugate acid in approximately equal amounts. And we can see why the approximately equal is important here. This is the only region of the graph where, although concentrations are changing by a great deal, pH isn't changing very much. In fact, in most of the other regions, the opposite is true. pH changes a great deal even as the concentration of, for example, HCO3- minus doesn't change very much. So buffers are very special in that they can maintain a roughly constant pH. There is a little bit of change here, especially as we get out on the fringes, despite very large changes in the concentration of the weak acid and its conjugate base. This is the beauty of buffers. And they're not just important for practical reasons in terms of controlling pH. They are very important for that experimental purpose, especially in biochemistry, but they'll also really help us to get under the hood of acid-base equilibria and deepen our understanding of this important class of chemical reactions. The hallmark of a buffer system is the ability to resist large swings in pH despite the addition of strong acid or base. And we saw what that looks like graphically in thinking about the concentrations of various conjugates as a function of pH. To focus in on buffers more specifically, we can think about the acid ionization equilibrium and how strong acid and strong base might influence this equilibrium when we have a mixture of HA and A minus, the conjugate base. So say, for example, we added hydroxide to this solution. That would convert some of the HA into A minus. We could also imagine adding H3O plus. This would convert some of the A minus back into HA through a proton transfer process. Through both of these interventions, imagine doing one or the other, the hydronium ion concentration actually won't change much as long as we still have appreciable and approximately equal within a one order of magnitude, let's say, concentrations of HA and A minus. Because as HA and A minus adjust in concentration, H3O plus concentration does not change very much to maintain equilibrium. And this is the magic and the hallmark of buffer solutions. And we'll do some calculations to verify this and develop some deeper conceptual understanding of buffers in this section. A buffer solution is defined as a solution containing a weak acid HA and its conjugate base A minus, which is also weak, which also reacts with water 
to an appreciable degree. And this image at the center of the slide shows you really the hallmark ability of buffers to resist large changes in pH where unbuffered solutions would undergo huge swings in pH. So in A on the left, we have an unbuffered solution at pH 8. And on the right, we have a pH 8 buffer system, a mixture of an acid and its conjugate base such that the pH is equal to 8 with appreciable amounts of both the acid and the conjugate base. To get to B, we add one milliliter of a 0.010 molar solution of hydrochloric acid. And this solution has a pH approximately equal to two, right, looking at the concentration of the strong acid HCl in the solution. So this is quite a bit of hydronium ion and would be expected to lower the pH of these solutions considerably. And in fact, that's exactly what happens in the case of solution, the solution on the left, the unbuffered solution. The pH here is low. We don't have an exact value because we don't know what the initial concentrations are in the unbuffered and buffered solutions, but we can say it's going to be quite low. And the pH indicator here turning red tells us that we're at a low pH here. But notice the pH 8 buffer, despite the addition of this hydronium ion, has not turned red pH is quite a bit higher, and in fact, it's approximately equal to 8. The pH hasn't changed by much. So one way we can conceptualize this is the buffer has somehow resisted a large change in pH despite the addition of a strong acid to the solution. It would do the same upon addition of a strong base, for example, a hydroxide salt solution. The question we want to dig into now is how? How does this work? Why does this work? In a way, we already know the answer. We're going to use the tools of equilibrium that we've already applied many, many times before, ice tables and that sort of thing, to get a handle on this. Acid ionization, equilibria, Ka values are all going to make a comeback, and we're going to see how buffers are able to resist large changes in pH due to the magic of having approximately equal amounts of HA and A- in the solution. To begin thinking about how this works, Let's get a handle on what happens when we add strong acid, which we can think of essentially as H3O+, plus, or strong base, which we can think of essentially as OH-, minus, to a buffer solution. So we start in the middle with a buffer solution with equal numbers of moles of the acid. Here it's acetic acid, CH3COOH, and its conjugate base, acetate, CH3COO-. Minus. When we add H3O plus into this solution, well, H3O plus, that's an acid, and it's going to react with the base in this solution to produce more of the conjugate acid of the weak base, acetic acid. That's why we see this relative uptick in the concentration or the number of moles of the weak acid in the solution on the left after adding hydronium, and likewise, there's a drop here in the molarity of the conjugate base as a result of its consumption in reaction with H3O+. So that ratio has adjusted. Now let's think about what happens when we add hydroxide. Well, hydroxide, we added to the original buffer, is going to react with the acid, acetic acid, hydroxide being a base, right, being a strong base will react with the acid, and notice what has happened. We produced the conjugate base, acetate, so its concentration or its number of moles has gone up, and the number of moles of the acid has gone down due to its consumption in a reaction with hydroxide. So one way to think about this is we're adjusting the ratio of acid to conjugate base or conjugate base to acid via the addition of hydronium ion or hydroxide. And in the buffer region, in this buffer territory where we have roughly equal amounts of the acid and its conjugate base, that ratio is logarithmically related to the pH. So we can have relatively large changes in the concentrations of acetic acid and acetate without large changes in pH. In essence, the added H3O plus or OH minus are mopped up or absorbed is how I think about this by the acetate 
or acetic acid. And as a result, there are not very large changes in the equilibrium concentrations of H3O plus and OH minus. Those molecules get consumed via reaction with the acid in conjugate base. This is important to keep in mind as well because it tells us that buffers have a limit. We'll return to this later in this section. There is a limit to how much buffers can resist changes in pH. And after all, if we go all the way back to this graph of ionization state as a function of pH, we see that straight away that we lose this capacity to resist a change in pH when we get outside of the so-called buffer region, when the concentrations of the acid and conjugate base get so different that we, one or the other, whichever one is there in small concentration, no longer really has the capacity to react with added hydronium or hydroxide. 